Hello everybody, my name is Tommy and welcome to Aero Workshop. Today I'm going to be jumping back in on the build of the Oosnest Workbee Z1 Plus CNC and today I'm going to be concentrating on the X carriage assembly. So let's get to it. Okay, first up I am going to be doing the Z axis wheels. So I have the Z plate here. There's two sides to the Z plate. One side has counter board holes and the other side doesn't. So the side that has the counter boards is the back and there's going to be three wheels on each side. Now you can see that there's three big holes for the allow for the eccentric spacers and there's three on the other side or for the solid side. So we just, again, as before, slide a bolt through each hole from the back to sit into the counter bar until I get all six in place. Like that. Now to that, I'm going to be adding a solid 6mm spacer on the side that has the 5mm holes and an eccentric spacer to the side that has the bigger holes. Like that. And I'll be doing that on all of them. Then I'll be adding a precision shim. I'll be adding a wheel. And another precision shim. And finally, the, lock, the nylock nut. Like that. I'm going to continue and I'm going to do that on the other four. And with that done, it's just a case of tightening them up. Okay, with those now tightened, I have went ahead and I've done the same as before and I have turned all the eccentric spacers so that the six millimeter side is facing the edge of the plate. And then it's just a repeat of what I done with the Y plate to adjust those to suit the extrusion. So I'm not going to do that on video again. I've already covered how you do that in the Y plate assembly. So I will leave a link to the playlist of the series in the description of the video. So if you've missed that, you can always go back and look at the Y plate assembly where you will get to see how to adjust the wheels. Okay, the next thing I need to add is the Z axis nut block. And that's just again, two bolts and two nuts. With the nut block now in place, there is a little grub screw that comes with it and you just screw that into the top of the nut block and you screw it down until it just hits the surface at the bottom edge of the cutout. Like that. And we'll be using that later when it comes to setting up the machine. Okay, now moving on to the X plate, which is this one here, the X plate black. I need to add two nut blocks again, like I did to the Y plate. So I'm going to do that now. And as before, you leave those loose until we get a little bit further into the build. Okay, on the X plate front, we again have two sides. There's one side that has counter bars and the other side doesn't. On the side that doesn't have the counter bars, we need to put on a limit switch. Now this limit switch is number two. Everything is numbered. And that's going to be going on the bottom of the plate, which is the side that has the bigger holes in it for the wheels. So just two little bolts. Like that. With that now in place, it's back to building up the same system as we did on the Y plate, which is again going to be two sets of wheels 
two on solid spacers and two on eccentric spacers. Now, I'm not going to run through all that again, but it's the same build up exactly as it was on the white plate assembly. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, with that now together, I have went ahead and I have adjusted the wheels to be a perfect fit on the extrusion. The next thing I want to do is mate the Z plate to the X plate front. And that's just done with four little bolts, some lock and washers and some shims. And just making sure that the two plates are aligned with each other, we tighten it up. Just like that. The next thing I'm going to do is introduce my bit of extrusion that's going to be my my Z like that and I'm going to attach an end plate to either end using four bolts and the counterboard side of the plate And you can fully tighten the top four bolts. And the four on the bottom, you tighten them. And loosen them by one full turn. So that the plate can then move again. So that's both of them plates now in place. Okay, the next thing is to attach a Z-axis stepper motor. Now, the stepper motors have a flat side on the shaft. So there's one flat side on the shaft. And on the flexible coupler, you have two tightening bolts and you also have two little grub screws. Now, what it says to do in the instructions is, is to just slide it on the smaller hole onto the stepper motor and attach from there, leaving it loose. So this is where I'm going to deviate a little bit from the instructions. 
What I am going to do, just to hold this in place, not to have it falling around, I am going to tighten the grub screw, just finger tight, onto the flat portion of the shaft, because that will line it up for later, because it needs to be lined up there anyway. And it'll just hold the flexible coupler in place when I'm attaching it to the top of the Z-axis plate. And we can loosen that once we go to tighten it up when we install the lead screw. So to attach the stepper motor to the top of the end plate, you have some 40 mil spacers and some bolts. And you just line those up with the threaded holes in the top of the end plate and screw in place. Now, there are four spacers and four screws for the stepper motor, but because I am using a touch probe, I need to attach the mount for the touch probe. So that'll be going on the other side of this. So the touch probe mount, you have a wire attached to the touch probe mount, which needs to sit into the little groove in the bottom of the mount. And then you have some 35 mil spacers that come with the mount. So you place those into the mount and they then sit in on the other side to allow for the mount to sit in place. And then again, just two more bolts. And we can tighten the four of those up now. And now the stepper motor and the touch probe mount are in place. Okay, the next thing we need to do is install the lead screw. So this is the Z-axis lead screw. And we're putting that through the bottom hole in the end plate. Now, next on, we will be adding a flange radial bearing. Now, that has a flange on it that sits through the hole in the end plate. So this one will be going facing the end plate. Then you have a bearing shim. And then you put on a lock and collar. And the next thing you want to do then is thread that through the Z-axis nut block. Until it gets close to the top here. And then you want to repeat what we done on the bottom in the opposite direction. So you put on your lock collar, you put on your bearing shim, and then you put on your flange radial bearing in the opposite direction to the bottom. And you continue screwing this until it sits in to the flexible coupler and it touches the shaft in the stepper motor. So with that now touching the shaft in the stepper motor, I am going to slightly loosen the grub screw, which I hand tightened earlier, but not enough in the way that it can pass over the flat portion of the shaft. And I'm going to turn the whole lot around so that I can tighten the two balls that'll actually lock the collar in place. And with those tightened, I go back around and I now tighten both group screws.
like that. And then I make sure that the, the flange radial bearing is going out through the hole, the shim is in place, and holding those as tight to the end plate as I can, I tighten the grub screw in the lock collar. Like that. And then I spin the whole assembly to the top so that I can access the bottom bearing and collars. Like that. And I seat those in the hole and again press tightly to the end plate and tighten the lock collar like that and now because we had left the bottom end plate at full turn loose on the bolts once we tighten those we now take any slap that would be left in the lead screw out of it by not being able to get those dead tight. So this is compressing the whole lot now to, to remove any play in the lead screw. Like that. And the next thing we want to do is I'm going to let it down a bit again. With that back down, I just want to check that there's no play in the carriage on the lead screw. And if there is, you can always adjust it with that little group screw that's in the nut block. But that seems okay to me. But if it comes an issue, I can always adjust it later. And finally on the X carriage, I need to add another drag chain mount. But before I do that, I need to feed the wire from the limit switch through the bottom hole in the back plate. Like that. Let it come up the back plate and that will sit in a slot here in the drag chain. So now it's just a case of couple of more bolts and let that through that slot like that and then just a couple of shims and lock nuts. And I'm just going to add a small cable tie just to keep that in place in the slot. Like that. Okay, so there's the X carriage assembly now completed. So I'm going to leave this video here. Hopefully you're enjoying seeing how this goes together. If you are, maybe you consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, maybe you consider subscribing so you won't miss any more of the videos. So all that's left for me to say is thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Good luck.